Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm Armando Fiera. Potato Jet? Becky and Chris. MKBHD. I just Dean. <laughs> Alrighty, so first off, we are going to get started with trying to replicate the good old potato jet set here. Actually, we just got set up today, finally, the seamless paper. Yay, thank you, Christian, for getting this for my birthday. It's very nice. We're just going to utilize this table. Normally, he's standing and he has more of a taller table, so we're cheating a little bit here because, again, we don't have all the same props and whatever that all these uh, creators have, so it's more about the lighting and the camera angles and that sort of thing. First step is we're going to get rid of this boring white wall and get some pop color here, which is a little new for this channel. How's that look? Good, are we done? All right, so let's take a peek. It's gonna pop up on screen for you, but for me, I'm going to reference uh, the video here from him. And one of the big characteristics that I like this set um, is because you can see a lot of the behind the scenes, right? You can see some of the lights. Our camera here, which for today's video, we're gonna be shooting everything on the Blackmagic Pocket 6K. So obviously everybody uses a slightly different camera. Um, and so we're going to match it as close as possible, all using one camera here. At least for this angle, uh, for Potato Jet stuff, is a roll is usually quite wide. And so we're using our 15 millimeter cine lens on there. We're gonna break this out here. Who needs cine lenses when you can have a good uh, old 18 to 135 EFS lens? There we go. That's what we want. And so now before I even start lighting, I want to just frame up my shot roughly. That's a good uh, starting point for framing. And for our key, we're gonna be using the Nanlite Forza 500. Definitely way more power than what we need for this shot. But I think it will come in handy to get proper exposure if we have to stop down or anything. We're also using the Nanlite uh, Quick Softbox. This is the 120 in comparison to the Monster 150 that is over there. I just want to interrupt real quick and give a huge shout out to Nanlite. This technically isn't a sponsored video as they didn't pay me to say or do anything, but they did send me all this lighting gear out. And so this video definitely wouldn't be possible without them. We're definitely featuring the Forza 500. This light is absolute insanity. We got the 30C, the 15C RGB tubes, and of course the Mixed Panel 150, which is an awesome full RGB WW light panel. And they have a ton of other light modifiers and amazing lighting products. So you should definitely check them out in the links in the description down below. Again, huge thank you to Nanlite. Back to the video. And currently we're at 3%. I'm going to bring it up to like 10 just to see where we're at. We definitely got more light going here. Everything is relatively in focus. And this is my guess because he is moving around so much that... Uh, you just want the ability to kind of move around with product front and back, break kind of the focus plane without being, you know, half your video being out of focus or anything. He usually has a light that's both in frame and illuminating, kind of helping create a nice little vignette in the back. And then on this guy, we are going to put the Nanlite uh, 150 mix panel. This is an awesome uh, RGB light. And the nice thing is it's got a soft box as well as a grid on it. So that way the grid will help focus the light exactly where we want it. All right, so we're kind of just splashing it onto there and it's definitely a little hotter than I want, but it's also more in frame than I want. So I'm gonna just back the light up. And then on the left-hand side, he usually has some sort of like really harsh Kind of practical light essentially again shooting onto here we're just going to use a little light that i will grab we're going to use the cute uh, forza 60b and we'll just keep it pretty simple here and throw on the reflector i'm actually going to keep it kind of warmer so i'm going to bring the intensity down something that goes against my instinct definitely is the like lack of symmetry when it comes to lights and everything but that's the fun part of this challenge trying something new and uh seeing how other creators are doing it and he uses barn doors to kind of shape the light i just want to see how this looks if i add 
a little stretchy diffuser thing now that will like kind of look silly here but it will kind of spread out the light a little bit more make it a little less ugly i think yeah it's definitely looking better on the screen here more like 25 percent and actually both lights kind of add some warmth to it so i'm going to change this from cool colors all right that's looking nice that's looking nice key light here i think this can be raised a little bit and angled down so we're getting less of a splash on the backdrop all right so we adjusted the key a little bit and now everything is coming together pretty well. And so the last thing, see, so has a microphone. A lot of uh, creators use uh, like booms and keep things out of frame. Not him. And his mounting point, I believe, is usually out of frame. But we're working with a small table here. It goes kind of over like this. All right. And... Yeah, our levels are looking okay. I'm looking a little pasty with the cool tones here, but we'll fix that in color correction. And yeah, this boom arm looks kind of weird. Now, the only thing that's looking off to me is I seem pretty far away from uh, the camera. So I'm actually going to... Ugh, more distance. Now I'm going to have to move my key back a bit. Alrighty. Yeah, this... This looks pretty decent, it's pretty close. Again, I want to reiterate that I didn't do any research into how people shoot stuff. So I'm very curious if any of you creators see this, so Potato Jay, if you're watching or any of the other creators, leave a comment down below. It would be awesome to see how accurate I was um, and what you did differently. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this setup and hopefully you were able to learn a thing or two and let's move on to the next one, shall we? All right, so now that we're done with Potato Jet, we're gonna go from vibrant and orange and white to something a little bit more closer to my style, which is black and grungy and awesome. This is none other than the Becky and Chris setup. Becky and Chris is usually a lot of more single source, uh, what it looks like type lighting setups. They like to keep the backgrounds very dark and all about the matte black everything and them kind of directly lit. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is just like last time, we're gonna frame up our shot before we move any lights. And one thing I wanna do is again, create separation. So I'm gonna move this a couple feet off the wall, get some separation. I'm gonna kill all these lights here by Potato Jet setup. And again, this will be a pretty basic setup just because I don't have nearly as cool props. And already this is looking pretty good, but I think we can improve upon a couple things here. And one of that is if you're going for especially dark stuff, you're gonna get a lot of light spill. So you wanna kill all other lights in the room. So definitely the big one, as well as there's a couple ceiling lights, wrong one, uh, just to remove any sort of bleed from there. If we look at the reference footage, they are pretty well lit on uh, both sides of their face. So you can see in this example right now, this side is clearly darker than this, and that's because the key light is on uh, this side. So if I move it directly behind the camera, and it's currently on 10%, I'm gonna take it down to like five. I'm also gonna open up the aperture on this lens. So the widest it goes is 3.6, and this is looking pretty good, pretty good. I absolutely love their uh, color palettes that they use in video. So I like this black, I like the blue of this, but we need some green. Now, I don't have any plants, real or fake. So I gotta find something that's green. One second. Does this count? Picture this as a plant. All right, so picture green there and then some nice painting or prints up here um, or textured background. What I absolutely love about Becky and Chris is they are obsessed with textures, whether it is wood textures or um, the kind of, I don't even know what you call them, paneled walls or anything. Oh. <laughs> 70 pound pit bull, that's a lap dog, right? They also like to desaturate skin tones, so hers works wonderfully. Again, this is probably gonna look stupid because I'm sitting on a couch. The other nice thing that this single source key light does 
is it gives a nice gradient to the background. Now I could take one of the extra lights and shine it directly on the back and some creators do that, but it seems as if Becky and Chris do a lot with a little when it comes to light sources. So I have a pretty big softbox kind of in front of me slash over me a little bit. Um, I believe I saw in their studio tour that they may even use a China ball um, to really kind of get a nice wrap around more of the studio. But what do you guys think? Pretty even lighting on the face and with a nice color grade, this should look uh, pretty close to what they've doing minus the lack of props and stuff. You know, I do think there is something missing from this setup. There is too much of the same color, even though they're all about matte black. I'll be right back. All right, so this is not gonna fill the frame. These are just like textured patterns by a company called Replica Services. If you guys are listening, please bring back your 16 by nine extra large format square. It's very hard to film. So bring in some sort of lighter wood texture to break it up in addition to different colored background props, bringing in greens, doing the best I can here. How do I do Becky and Chris? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's move on to the next setup. All right, so now we are going from Becky and Chris to one of my favorite people that I've ever had the luxury to meet on this platform, Armando Fiera. And let's see if we can match his amazing cinematic style. His is definitely probably gonna take the most work out of anyone here because it is just so beautiful. So first thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm going to clean up this little desk area. That's gonna be kind of uh, step one and then we'll get the camera and everything over here. So see you in a minute. Alrighty, so we got the desk cleaned up here. Christian set up a good little light here. I can already tell that's gonna be too bright and we're just gonna dim it down. And now time to move the camera and get our framing set up here. Alrighty, now I'm definitely going to throw back on my Irix 45, the beautiful lens, because Armando has a really nice soft kind of highlight roll off, fall off, really nice bokeh in the background, all the characteristics that this lens can accomplish that this one, uh, not so much. All right, so now we need to set up our framing and because we are at 45, the camera is definitely going to have to be back. Armando usually shoots pretty much eye level. And the reason a lot of creators talk eye level right at the camera, it just gives a more personable feel like you're actually talking to someone. And I gotta be careful because got that thing right in the way. All right, and currently we are at a T1.5, probably like a two. We'll get some amount of separation in here. Anyone else have a dog that like perfectly lays down right where you need to put something? Now, if we look at the reference, we can see that his computer's kind of off center and I'm actually kind of a fan of that. Rather than like what I have set up now where my desk is perfectly symmetrical and then I'm perfectly symmetrical, kind of depending on your desk, set up in your uh, computer screen background. I don't know, I, I kind of like the, he has stuff going on on both sides. So I'm gonna move the camera slightly. So I'm definitely breaking one of the basic rules of composition, which is no harsh lines through the body. And I'm putting literally a stark contrast line straight through me, but I don't have a ton of options. I will just take the table instead of pulling it in front of me. This will be kind of uh, the over here set piece. Since we don't really see slate over here, light. So this is going to be the basic composition. So what I'm going to do first, uh, since this is going to look pretty dynamic, is I'm going to kill all the lights and we're going to slowly add it in. So you probably can't see anything. We're moving the key light. And now what we can see in the reference video is that he's got what almost looks like blinds in the background. That is actually a gobo. And so let's go set that up. I'm gonna turn on house lights and now we're gonna go get a gobo. All right, so the gobo actually attaches to the Nanlite 60B. It basically is just a projector mount. So it kind of uh, strengthens the amount of light they put in it, but it also has a slot that you can put different shapes in. So I have these little, what looks like mini blinds. And when you shine light through it, it projects it um, to make it look larger. And we'll see what we get when we turn this guy on. And we start to uncover 
the light. Now here, it's all about shaping the light here. So on the sides of the gobo here, you can see these uh, almost like metal uh, cutters here. And as I push them in and out, you can actually see how it shapes the light. So I can have a whole strip or if I pull them all out all the way, I'm gonna get the full shape here. And his aren't perfect blinds. He's actually got a pretty cool pattern. I like the strength on the black paint over here, but it's getting pretty harsh on the white. So I'm actually going to try and reverse them. We move the gobo to this side. I think this looks as best as I can get it for now. Again, Armando, if you have any tips on working with these things, please leave them down in the comments below because uh, yeah, these are one of those things that look super easy and look super clean when you get it, but it is pretty hard to get it just right. And so, yeah, that looks as good as I can get it for now. It doesn't look like a whole nother light source. It almost looks like I need to bring this light a little bit more to the front and then almost looks like he has a big reflector right here. So uh, less dramatic on the face. This is really dropping off here. All right, so now I need to reflect the other side of my face. The nice, uh, I think it's like six by four or something. And so we got our white side here. And I'm going to bring this over here. So now we got a little bit of fill. Were they gone? Were they there? All right, so it looks like from the histogram, it's still a bit bright, but you can always darken in post. That's a nice lesson to know, is to always trust your scopes. And so I'm trusting mine right now, even though it looks brighter than I want the final image to be. So if we add in a color grade, hopefully what you're seeing right now looks pretty close. Eh? If we compare it to Armando's video here, how do we do? This definitely probably was the most complex setup of the bunch here. So next up, we're gonna turn up the brightness quite a bit and go to kind of the king of crispy, MKBHD. So in order to get proper MKBHD style, his studio has a ton of windows, a ton of overhead lights the whole way through. And so when he uses his key light, which I believe is a pretty much a softbox, if we look at the reference video here. Oh, by the way, the camera's now locked off because Christian uh, is back, is killing him. Uh, and also our battery died. And so now we're hardwired in, so stationary. So the first thing we're gonna do here is take the key light that we were using for Armando's setup and then actually take off the softbox. Take this Nanlite Forza 500, all 500 watts of power and just bounce it off the ceiling. So that's 1%. Let's make our way to 100. Eh? Am I still exposed? Uh, we may need to soften it up a little bit here, but for now, we'll just keep it pretty much blasting. For this camera angle, we are going to have to go back to the crappy lens because he shoots very wide and very close because just like most creators, he wants to be personable with the audience. All right, so first things first, like everything else, let's get our framing. <laughs> Didn't lock it down all the way and used to a heavier lens. Let's make this lighting a little bit better. I'm actually going to put the soft box back on because the light is very harsh. I'm still going to use it as a fill. All right, so now let's crank this guy back up. You're looking better in the background here. It's nice and bright, but it's not clipping. It's well exposed. So for the key, we're gonna use our other Forza 500 this time with a completely outrageous uh, softbox. This is the 150 by Nanlite. And we'll start off with like 15% and we'll see what that is doing. That is doing some lovely things. If we take a look at our scopes, you can see that we are very healthy in kind of the mid range. We have a little bit of contrast right here. Let me double check. Obviously, Marquez and I have different skin tones. I believe he does have a little bit of dynamic touch. Yes, he does use a little bit flatter. So 
So I'm going to bring that bounce back. This is kind of how you achieve the uh, very nice bright, but not overexposed. We're not clipping anything, still well exposed MKBHD look. What do you guys think? Again, let me know down in the comments below. And let's move on to our final uh, creator setup here. One of the most amazing OGs of YouTube, iJustine. All right, so for iJustine setup, we're going to keep with the brighter look, but the set that I kind of chose to go is a little bit different where it's a much warmer set. Um, so that'd be fun to play around with some warmer colors while keeping cooler skin tones, but uh, very kind of bright and beautiful and add a little bit of pink flare in just for her. So we're gonna keep with the same key light because this is a lot closer to my traditional setup. Um, and this light is very hard to move with that giant softbox. Um, I'm going to keep with the same wide angle lens here. And this one, I really know that her background is very different from mine. Uh, I do not have any of those awesome, really cool light props or mantle pieces or anything. So this one is basically going to be more about the lighting rather than the actual aesthetic to the room. I'm going to switch lenses actually because this has some very wide distortion and her shot actually all the lines are nice and straight so she could be using just a zero distortion lens. This crappy lens definitely has distortion so we're going to switch to the 45. Obviously you can see the boom mic here. I know I haven't talked about that too much in this video but uh, most of these creators with the exception of Potato Jet in the beginning who had the mic kind of in frame. Most people use a boom mic that is just out of frame. Uh, so I wasn't gonna waste time moving this to every setup since you wouldn't even see it in the end. And we're using audio from the lav, not any shotgun mics. All right, so first I need to clean off this stuff real quick. All right, so I'm going to bring in the reflector once more because I just seen seems to be having pretty much equal lighting on both sides. So now this is a pretty good basic uh, setup. Again, it's bright. What I can see from the histogram is everything's decently in the middle. It's a little bit more darker on this side, but I can't really move this light fully center. So what I'm going to do now is get some warmness going on the wall. All right, so we changed things up a little bit here. It was not matching as close as I wanted it to, and we've done pretty good so far. So I didn't want to fail off at the end here. And so we changed to a smaller softbox, so that way I could get it right overhead. And so now we can have the background isn't getting uh, as much spill, and so it can kind of keep to that nice warm touch. And then what I'm about to add in here is uh, a hair light, because I can tell in the reference footage that she has a hair light on her. And I don't have any more arms, so I can't put this like directly over top. Looking pretty good here, but we're still missing one final element. So in here lies the secret to a good I Justine video. There we go. These are the Nanlite Pava Tube 30Cs, and this is the Nanlite Pava Tube 15C. That's a four foot tube. We got the two footers and even uh, little one foot versions right here. These are awesome. All this stuff is of course gonna be linked in the description down below. And let's set these up. All right, I've been staring into lights all day, so it's a little hard to tell. It seems as if we have completed our tax so this one definitely was a lot harder. I'm not used to warm and cool mixed color temperatures. So this was quite the challenge to finish off at. Kudos to you, I Justine, for the beautiful set. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all of these setups down below. Whew. Okay, quick note about that I Justine setup. I realized that the pink RGB tubes were a little overpowering uh, to the warm lights. Realized it too late while I was editing. And so yeah, little mistake there. But overall, what do you think about all the different setups? This video took 
way longer and way more effort than I originally thought it would, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Huge thanks to Christian for uh, carrying the kind of behind the scenes camera and helping with editing and everything. Another shout out to Nanlite. Again, they didn't sponsor the video. I wasn't paid to use their products or anything, um, but they did send out all this gear to use. And so without them, this video definitely wouldn't be possible. So huge thanks to Nanlite again. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching this video. Honestly, if you enjoyed this video at all, more than ever, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you like this video, leave a comment down below on some other creators I should try out and get subscribed so you don't miss those upcoming videos. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.